Okay, today we're going to be doing the ultimate guide for duck station. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to convert your Q and bin files into CHD. I'm going to be showing you where to put your BIOS files. I'm going to be showing you how to prevent black screen or potential black screen when you're booting up games. I'm even going to show you how to use shaders within duck station. So without a doubt, this is the most comprehensive guide I've ever done on this channel for duck station. Okay, so let's start then. So what we're going to need to do first of all is of course download duck station itself this one's recently had quite a significant update so we're going to go through all that anyways so this is going to be for windows if we just left click there now what i was saying just a minute ago for a potential black screen and how to prevent that it tells us just here that we need to download the vc plus plus rt so if we just download this one first after you've done that we're then going to download duck <laughs> So left click on duck. Next thing I'm going to suggest doing is grabbing CHD man. Now this is such an awesome program and I'm going to show you how this works in a minute. Link's going to be in my description for both of these. So what we're going to do next then is actually set up the VC redisk which we just downloaded from the duck station website. So let's just double left click on this one. And what we're going to do is I agree to the license terms and conditions and we're going to go to install. Okay, cool. So that's just a measure put in place now just in case we should get black screen. So once you've installed that, we're then going to just take away or delete that exe. Okay, so next thing we need to do is unzip Duck Station Emulator. This is what I've just downloaded. And I'm going to create a new desktop, so right click anywhere, go down to new, folder, and I'm going to call this one Duck Station. You can call this whatever you want. Now I'm going to go to that zip folder. If I left click on any one of the files just here, press on the control button on my keyboard and then the A button, that's going to highlight everything. Then I left click, drag and drop into that Duck Station folder. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do next is just delete that duck station zip folder. We no longer need that one. Okay, so if we go into the duck station folder, there's a lot of files here. Don't let this overwhelm you. You won't be needing any of these. What we are going to do next, though, before opening up duck station itself, is taking a look at BIOS files. In my BIOS files folder just here, I've got three BIOS files. These are the files which are going to work for American games, North American games that is, European games and Japanese games. So what I'm going to do is actually just place the folder BIOS containing those three files inside of that duck station folder. It's that simple. Okay, next thing I'm going to do then is go to my games folder. I've got two games here. I've got Parodius. And as we can see, this is in bin and Q format. And I've also got the awesome Rayman. Again, in bin and Q. Now, there's a ridiculous amount of dot bins with this one. So this is where the CHD man program is going to come in use. So what we're going to do is have a quick look at that before I actually go any further with Duck Station. Here's the CHD man dot zip I just downloaded. If we just open this one up. Here's what we've got inside. So what we're going to do is convert those bin and queues into CHD. Now CHD is going to take away all the bin and queue files and it's also going to save us space as well. And it's going to give us an end result of just having one single file for our games. So to use this, what we're going to do is just say go into Parodius just here. Now if I go back to the CHD man zip, what I'm going to do is drag the chdman.exe and the file below it. So again, I can left click on one of these files, press the control button and then left click say on chdman.exe. If I then just drag and drop into that Parodius folder, what I'm going to do now then to start this process of conversion is just double left click on the dot bat. Terminal is going to come up and it's going to show us how much longer we've got to wait for this so some games are going to be fairly short other games such as the rayman game is going to take likely longer this because it's got more files to go through okay so once that's finished as we can see within that parodius folder we've now got a parodius.chd what we can actually do then is delete everything in here and what we're going to do is just left click on the Parodius CHD so it's unchecked and then just go to delete everything else. 
We can also do the same process with Rayman. So again, over in the CHD man folder, we're going to just drag and drop those two same files inside of this Rayman folder. Really is that simple. Then again, double left click on the .bat file just there. Okay, and once that's finished, what we're going to do is again, just highlight everything in that Rayman folder. And we're just going to scroll down and we're going to find that CHD file. So we're going to delete everything there. Cool. So we've now got Parodius, which is one single file. And we've also got Rayman, which is one single file. Okay, so that's everything out of the way. What we're going to do now is drag in my games folder into the Duck Station folder. So everything's in one folder. So we got BIOS and we've also got games folder. Okay, so to open up Duck Station, we're going to go down to Duck Station QT. If we just double left click, more info, run anyway. And this is going to bring us into the Duck Station Wizard. Fairly simple to use. We can change the theme here. I'm going to go for, say, a dark fusion blue. We're also going to make sure enable automatic updates is on. Duck Station gets updates very frequently. We're going to go to next. Next thing we're going to do is put that BIOS order into place. So under BIOS directory, I'm going to go to browse. And here's my BIOS folder, which I've just placed inside of the Duck Station folder. If I left click on that one, select folder, and we're then going to go to next. Next thing we're going to want to do is add our games folder. So I'm going to go to add. Here's my games folder, select folder, and I'm going to press yes on scanning recursively takes more time. We're going to go to next. Next thing we're going to want to do here is just leave controller port to analog joystick. That will do us fine for now. We're going to go to next. And everything here for video settings, we're going to leave everything as default for now. We're going to go to next. Next thing we're going to see is retro achievements. Now, this is entirely optional, but if you've got a retro achievements account, then just go to enable achievements. And from here, we can go to login and you can pop in your username and password. There's a link just here for the Retro Achievements website, and that's going to tell you what Retro Achievements is. It's absolutely free. It just means it's going to give us points and rewards for completing particular tasks in particular games. What we're going to do then is go to next and finish. And here we go. We're finally inside a duck station. So what we need to do first of all is just make sure the controller is correctly set up. We can do this by going to settings. We're going to go down to controllers, controller port 1, and we can actually configure different controller types for the emulator itself just here. So, of course, this is on analog joystick for now, but if I want to change this to say digital controller, there we go. And if we go over to automatic mapping, we can actually see our Xbox controller just there. So if you're using, say, a PlayStation 3 or 4 or 5 controller, it will likely give you the same option there. But for this, I'm going to be using the Xbox controller. And that should then automatically map out your controller. If it doesn't, then you can do what I've done. And if we left click on each one of these buttons, you can then start mapping it out manually. So left on my D-pad on my controller, and I'm just corresponding this. Very simple stuff. And we've also got the same option for controller port 2. So under controller type, I'm going to choose analog controller. And from here, you can then map out the second player. Very simple stuff. So controller's all set up. So let's actually boot up a game. I'm going to go for Parodius. Just double left click. And if I go up to view. Full screen. Okay, so everything's working fine on that. Everything's set up and the game's obviously booting. If I press escape button on my keyboard, this is going to bring us into this menu just here. What I'm going to do for now is just use my D-pad and go down to close game. Now, I can actually save the state of this game. So I'm going to go to exit in save state. Or, of course, we can go down to exit without saving. I'm going to use the save state here. Okay, so I was talking at the introduction of this video about using scalers in Duck Station. So what we're going to do is use Rayman for this. I'm going to right click on the game. I'm going to go to properties. And from here, if I go down to post processing, I'm then going to go to enable post processing. I'm going to go to add. 
And just here we've got lots of different files to use for different scalers. So I'm going to use the CRT new pixie reshade. If I left click on this one, and as we can see, that's now added into place. Very simple stuff. And if I left click on this, as we can see, I've got various different slides just here to adjust this shader. We're going to use this as default settings for now. If I just close out of here and open up Rayman, so double left click. And if I double left click using my mouse, I can then go into full screen. And here we go. We've got awesome shader. It looks like an old school CRT TV. And as you can see, that looks pretty spectacular. I quite like that one. So again, what we're going to do is just exit out of this game. And I'm going to go down to save state for this. And I'm going to use a game slot. So I'm going to choose game slot one. If I then close out of the game. And we also got the option here to save state. But since I've just saved it, I'm going to go down to exit without saving. So, of course, if you want to take away the scaler, then just remember to right-click on the game, properties, post-processing, and here it is. Now, we can actually remove these just here by going to clear, or just go to uncheck, enable post-process, and that should take off the shader altogether. And just remember, we can actually change things just here. So, for this particular shader just here, we got lots of different options. So, we can actually do this on the fly too. If I open up the game again, I'm going to go to system, load state, game save one. Okay, so whilst we're in the game, if I go back to this shader, and just remember to enable post-processing, and there we go. So we can actually change things as we're playing the game itself. And as I adjust these slides, you'll see that the image, the game image that is, is being changed at the same time on the fly, as it were. We can also add a frame just here, as you can see. And we can also give the gameplay screen that authentic CRT looking wobble so yeah some very cool stuff just here to use okay so we're going to close out that game and we're going to take a quick look at video settings so I'm going to go down to exit without saving this time okay so we're going to go to Proteus if I right click on the game, I'm going to go to properties and from here, I'm going to go down to graphics this time. Just here under render, I'm going to just leave this as global setting. Adapter, I'm going to use my RTX graphics cards and select this one. Under here, we got internal resolution. Now we can actually bump these games up to over 4K, but to be honest, for PS1 games, I think that's a bit overkill. I think around 1080p should be fine. If we go down to texture filtering, we can actually give the textures a little bit more definition. I'm gonna use bilinear, no edge blending. We can actually change the aspect ratio of games. So of course, most PS1 games were designed for a four by three display. If you put this to 16 by nine or widescreen, then your game is quite likely gonna look very stretched and take away anything good looking about it. So we're gonna use this as a global setting. I'm gonna go to PGXP geometry correction. Next thing we're gonna do is go over to advanced. We're gonna go down to rendering options and just here I'm gonna to go to multi-sampling and increase this to four times MSAA. We're gonna to go to line detection. I'm gonna put this to quads. And really these graphic settings are really just a case of experimenting. Some games are gonna look fine with some of these options, some won't. But that's the basics of how to upscale PlayStation 1 games using Duck Station. If I close out of here and open up Parodius again, and from here, we're going to go to load state.
And that's it for today's Duck Station at Automat, guys. So I've covered quite a lot in there. So just remember, you can go backwards in the video to find out exactly which options I've used for, say, video settings or even checking out those scalers. And just remember, that was just one scaler I used in Duck Station. There's many you can use. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. Anyways, until next time, stay retro.